my name is William Long. Around the world, we're seeing a huge development of offshore wind farms, a major contribution to the production of clean energy. I work for Airbus Helicopters in the UK and have been involved in offshore wind for the past nine years. In previous jobs, I've been both a helicopter pilot and a deck officer on ships. I've conducted transfers from both helicopters and boats to vessels at sea. This means I have some experience to call upon when making comparisons between vessels and helicopters. Having said that, I'd always like to learn from you. Please don't think that we at Airbus believe that helicopters can do everything that a vessel can do. They can't. But there are things that a helicopter is uniquely capable of doing, and we at Airbus believe that ships and helicopters working in collaboration can provide a robust and flexible range of solutions to the problems of construction and operation and maintenance in offshore wind. At offshore wind exhibitions, I've often had a conversation with people from the marine industry about helicopters, and the key assumptions they have about them are that they are expensive, dangerous, and polluting. Well, I'm going to give you a few situations and five reasons why helicopters should be part of the offshore wind solution. We're seeing the development of a lot of offshore wind farms in many countries around the world. The size of some of these farms is huge and many of them are now a long way from shore. For example, the largest wind farm in the world is currently the Hornsey farm off the east coast of the UK. It's already about 400 square kilometres and once completed it'll be over 1,500 square kilometres. This is about the same area as the Greater London in the UK. It's also 120 kilometres from shore. A larger helicopter, such as the H-175, can deliver around 16 people to any part of the wind farm at around 240 kilometres an hour. That's about 130 knots, as opposed to a CTV transporting around 12 people at no more than 50 kilometres an hour. The technicians can be delivered directly to the helideck-equipped SOVs or offshore substations, and this means that they can be accommodated ashore or crew change can be conducted more rapidly enabling a quicker return to work, as well as reducing cost. With the use of vessels or OSS equipped with refuel facilities, you significantly increase the range of both large and smaller helicopters. The smaller helicopters, such as the H-135, an example behind me, and the H-145, can conduct hoist operations all around the field and are ideally suited for providing ambulance services for people injured offshore. The helicopters, like many air ambulances ashore, can provide high levels of patient care while being able to deliver them quickly from place of injury, possibly at the top of a wind turbine, directly to hospital ashore. The alternative is to go through the complex process of evacuating them down the main shaft of the turbine from the transition piece to a CTV and then ashore to a harbour where they'll be transferred by land ambulance to hospital. The use of helicopters reduces time to hospital and reduces risk for the whole construction team. The second situation where a helicopter can be useful is in the operations and maintenance phase once the farms are constructed and producing power. When it's windy, a lot of power is being produced and transferred via the offshore substation ashore. In the event of any turbine failing, a team of technicians can be transferred from shore or SOV quickly and smoothly directly to the nacelle of the turbine. This means that they arrive where they need to be without fatigue or seasickness. The unique stability and autopilot provision provided by the latest generation of Airbus avionics, Helionics, allows a precise, stable position to be held over the nacelle, conducting hoist transfers in a very short period of time, perhaps only 20 seconds. A helicopter can actually benefit from higher wind conditions as well, allowing it to use less power to stay in the hover. The high winds will not significantly affect their speed, over 220 km an hour, whereas a CTV will not be able to proceed at maximum speed and will be limited by sea state for a transfer. In Europe, helicopters are allowed to conduct hoisting operations with significant wave heights of up to 6 metres, far in excess of the CTVs and SOVs, allowing a wider window for operations. Imagine not only a turbine failing, but if an OSS fails and needs repair, the loss of revenue from many turbines can be millions, not just thousands. Like a CTV, a helicopter can be owned or leased, and in addition to a standing charge, the usage can be paid for by the amount of time the helicopter flies. This means that the overall cost is not dissimilar to a CTV. <laughs> 
Helicopters and their operations are regulated by the same authorities and to the same standards as airlines. Airliners are safe, aren't they? The pilots, crews and technicians working on them are also highly regulated and trained, meaning that all operations are conducted safely and within the restrictions of regulated operations manuals. Helicopters have been used on offshore wind farms since the early 2000s and in that time there have been hundreds of thousands of hoist cycles conducted. There have been no fatal accidents or crashes, only a few minor injuries have occurred and all of them are required by law to be reported to the aviation authorities, enabling everyone in aviation to learn from them. Because it's part of the aircraft, the hoist cable is maintained to the same high standards as every other part. It'll be washed and inspected daily and will be replaced after a specific number of cycles. And finally, the technicians will be hoisted from a few metres above the helitech. The lowering only takes a few seconds. The exposure is minimal. Helicopters normally travel at around 120 to 140 knots, and this means that they're about five times quicker than a CTV. This means that they can travel from land and be at the wind farm far quicker than a CTV. Once in field, they can move between turbines at opposite ends of the wind farm far more rapidly than a CTV or SOV. In high wind conditions, the helicopters can continue to travel at those speeds, whereas the vessels will be required to slow down. The ride comfort in a helicopter is far higher than a CTV, and this means that technicians can be delivered directly to the nacelle by smaller helicopters such as the H135 or H145 without any motion sickness, allowing them to start work straight away. The larger helicopters such as the H175 can transport around 16 people at high speed over significant distances, allowing crews to be housed ashore. The concept that a helicopter could help reduce CO2 emissions is to many counterintuitive. Helicopter technology has been optimised over the last few decades, reducing fuel consumption, and this is still a focus of investigation. Aviation fuel is a slightly lighter distillate than diesel, and biofuels can now be added in the form of sustainable aviation fuel, reducing emissions from fossil fuels. Because of the speed of travel, the time it takes to conduct a transfer of personnel is reduced. In addition, it's reported that a helicopter tends to produce a third less CO2. CTVs tend to be able to make 25 knots, 46 kilometers an hour. A helicopter will be traveling between 120 and 140 knots, 220 to 240 kilometers. This is nearly five times quicker than the CTV. When a CTV travels in higher sea states, the captain is forced to reduce the speed compared with a smooth sea state, and the power requirements increase, and therefore relative fuel consumption increases. Regardless of sea state, a helicopter can make 120 knots and the fuel consumption remains about the same. The higher speed allows the aircraft to complete the job far more rapidly. Once complete, the helicopter will shut down, unlike a CTV, which will continue to run the engines to ensure it continues to make way or is underway. As a result, the CO2 emissions per technician can be significantly lower with a helicopter than with a CTV. Furthermore, Airbus is leading the transformation towards carbon neutrality. Our entire helicopter range can fly with up to 50% sustainable aviation fuels and we are working on developing the solution that will allow the figure to reach 100%. So, I've demonstrated that a helicopter can be less expensive, extremely safe and less polluting than you previously believed. If this has prompted any questions, please feel free to make contact with Airbus Helicopters representatives to answer your questions. Thank you.